Well, the Friday deadline for negotiation, negotiators to reach a climate deal at the COP29 summit in Azerbaijan is inching closer. Countries are working toward an agreement to get more money to nations living with the worst effects of climate change. CBC's international climate correspondent Susan Ormiston is in Baku joining us this morning. Susan, uh, great to see you. Uh, big question, of course. Are leaders any closer to finding an agreement on a climate financial package? You've been there covering this extensively. What are you hearing? Well, it's definitely crunch time, and we're hearing that there's still some thorny issues. There's no set number yet, we're told, on how much a financial package might be. We're talking about hundreds of billions of dollars. And also this issue that keeps coming up, whether this conference will underscore last year's agreement, which was to transition away from fossil fuels. There's some opposition to that. We're hearing that Saudis are trying to block that being repeated. But I wanted to tell you about where we're are. We are in another part of COP where all these countries have pavilions. This is Brazil's pavilion. It's big, it's showy, it's well positioned, and that's because Brazil is hosting next year's COP, COP 30. So they're putting on a big show, welcoming delegates to next year's conference. And right next to Brazil, we find Turkey. And Turkey also has a large footprint at this COP. Why? Because they're making a bid to hold COP 32, which would be in two years, and they're trying to get everybody behind their bid to be the host there. And there are lots of other pavilions that we've visited. Russia is here with a big delegation trying to burnish its credentials, even though it's a high emitter. Canada has a pavilion, of course, where a lot of meetings and discussions take place. We are also seeing the European Union, very big leader in these talks this year. And also China is here with a delegation of a thousand, a big delegation. So this is a lot of the energy and fun and interest about COP away from those neg negotiating rooms. And as you say, away from the, those negotiating, uh, you know, discussions that are happening. But we know that those are keeping a very close eye on those negotiations. Uh, Susan, young activists, certainly as they always attend these events, trying to get their voices heard. You met with some of those protesters at COP29. So talk to us more about what they've been telling you. There's a limited space for protest inside this converted uh, soccer uh, stadium where a game had to be sent somewhere else this week, uh, but they are told where they can be. They have to be within certain areas and very quiet. But we did speak to an influencer and climate activist from Mexico, Shia Bastida. Here's how she was feeling. For, the, for us, for youth, the climate crisis is something that's the normal for us. It's something we grew up with. So I didn't think it would have to get to us talking about money to really know what is being funded and what isn't. And we've come all the way around to realize that that is exactly where real solutions come from. And I want to tell you that it's not all gloom and doom here, although these are tough negotiations. Some of the protests happen on a nightly basis, including one called the Fossil Award. And it is awarded every night for the country that is doing its best to do the least. We caught up with it at 6 p.m. last evening. There have been several recipients so far, including the G7, the entire G7, which includes Canada, of course, for trying to dodge and switch on paying its part of the climate finance package, or damage, really. Uh, every night they have a, a different recipient. Russia's also been on their list this COP. But it's a bit of levity, a bit of attention-grabbing gimmick uh, after long days inside this uh, so-called stadium at COP29. You just showed us there with that, you know, fossil of the day and, the, you know, the dinosaurs certainly bring a little bit of a smirk to people's faces. Susan, I know you'll continue to be covering this for us. Indeed, great to have you there. Uh, Susan Ormiston for us in Baku, Azerbaijan at COP29. Thanks, Susan.